if doomsday really does happen and you actually have to bug out and you're lucky enough to find a place like this you'll set up in a spot like this and kick back and enjoy doomsday but even in a nice spot like this, eventually you'll get tired. And you're gonna want to know when Doomsday is over. So you're gonna wanna keep in touch with the world and find out when it's all over. For that, you need a radio. I've been looking into radios for use in a situation like this. I'll show you what I found out. What you want in a radio is something that's pretty rugged, that has a lot of different bands that you can listen to, and that has several options for powering it. It needs to be rugged, weather resistant, and not too heavy. This is the Kato Voyager KA500. It's got AM, FM, and two shortwave bands, plus the NOAA weather frequencies. Almost anywhere you are in the country, you're gonna be covered by one of these seven weather frequencies. So you can listen to the weather just about no matter where you are, to your heart's content. This radio has a lot of different options for powering it. My favorite one is this. <laughs> it's a crank, it's a dynamo. The radio comes with a rechargeable battery pack in the back here, which you can see. And so you can recharge that a number of different ways, including this hand crank over here. Another way you can do it is this solar panel. Now, to get a full charge to these batteries out of this solar panel is just about impossible. But what you can do is boost it a little bit so that it doesn't run the battery down as much. And under ideal conditions, you could get a full charge out of it. I just wouldn't count on it, okay? You are gonna have to crank it up. You can also run it on AA batteries, but if you do have electricity, you can also charge it here. You need a six volt, AC to DC power adapter that plugs in the wall. If you've got one, great, you're in good shape. If not, you can buy one that's made by Kato specifically for this radio. Now this is an interesting feature. You've got a USB port here. You bugged out in your truck and you've got a um, cigarette lighter adapter thing that's got a USB out. Okay, you can plug your USB cable into that and into this radio and charge the radio from your car battery. Or you can throw this switch to out, and now you're sending power out of the radio through this USB port to recharge your cell phone, for instance. And the radio comes with a bunch of different tips that adapt to most cell phones out there. Just charge up this battery with the dynamo, turn this switch to out, and drain this battery to recharge your cell phone. And now you can make a phone call. You might not be able to see this in this bright light, but it's got a flashlight right here LED bulb that doesn't drain a lot of power, so you'll get a long burn out of it. It's also got a red flashing distress signal, and it has a setting for a reading lamp, five LED reading lamp that comes up under the solar panel. This rubberized material around it will protect it so it can take some shock. It's got a carry handle, and it's pretty light, which is nice in your backpack. I've tested the reception on this, and it's pretty good in the FM. I can pick up local stations around here, no problem. AM is a little weak. This antenna right here is gonna manage the FM and the shortwave frequencies. And then the AM is an internal coil. I'm gonna give you an example here of the 10 megahertz frequency, which is the popular 40 meter band. So let's listen. Okay, we've got a preacher. But the point here is that the signal is a little weak. Let's see what we can do to boost that. I'm gonna show you a nice antenna hack. What we have here is about 30 feet of speaker wire. 30 feet is just a little short of being a quarter of the length of a 40 meter radio wave. But it's pretty close, and so I'm thinking that if I throw this up in a tree and then run it back to my antenna, it's gonna boost the signal.
it's just a temporary setup. It's fine. See if this makes any difference. So that seems to be helping. First push this all the way down so you don't bend your antenna. A time that God has set aside to specifically meet with his people. Alright. Off. On. That might not be the case at all frequencies because this antenna is not the right length for every frequency. But it'll probably help some. So I think it's worth a shot. Good taste can become a mechanism against ideological subversion. I think the way to improve this antenna is to take this and solder an alligator clip to it and then just clip it to the end here whenever you need it instead of wrapping this wire around it. The gauge of the wire doesn't really matter. The smaller it is, generally the cheaper it's gonna be, so that should work fine for you. And uh, you don't want it too big anyway because it's just more weight in your pack. I recommend you get a radio like this for a survival situation. In fact, I recommend this one because I've checked it out and I'm satisfied that it's the right one for the job. In any event, go to the blog survivalnewsonline.com where I'll have an article about choosing radios for survival situations and I'll have a direct link to the WND Superstore where you can buy this radio at World Net Daily. Because even if you get lucky enough to stay in a place like this with me, you're still gonna get tired of it at some point and you're gonna want to head home. But you gotta wait for it to be safe to do so. And with the radio, you'll know. I'll see you around.